it's funny because people have asked me about my 3D logo, and that's really all it all it is is a is just a three dimensional logo. It's a coincidence that it's an A, and that when you make a three dimensional A like this, it turns out to be a pyramid. That's kind of cool. But you know, it's funny because people say, "Well, why do you have the uh, Illuminati symbol as your logo?" Well, it's not. It's the A of artisan. And it's kind of cool that it makes a pyramid. I think it's cool. Nothing wrong with it. This is the larger wood version that I made in the shop. I will not deny that part of the artisan philosophy, which I've been working on for quite some time, I'm actually writing about it. It's taken me three years. I can't seem to finish it. But there is a link between you know, the ancient philosophy of artisans, well, the ancient uh, artisans obviously uh, uh, created our craft, but as far as my philosophy, it, it doesn't include, it, there, it's not as mysterious <laughs> as, the, as the Freemason philosophy. The, the artisan philosophy is more about being highly skilled at whatever you do. In other words, you could be the best, uh, you know, uh, attorney or the best doctor or the best whatever, the best burger flipper. Uh, if you love your craft, if you love what you're doing, and you seek to be the best at it, then you're an artisan. It doesn't uh, doesn't have to always be associated with the construction trades. But I always tell people that. You know, if you're, if you love what you're doing, and that's the key to always love what you're doing in life. And if you do, then you will seek to be the best at that. Uh, and I said, you know, I said seek. It doesn't mean you'll always accomplish that. But you can accomplish being the person that um, respects the trade. Um, you know, has put the most effort into it. In other words, there may be someone who is naturally gifted in an area, but that doesn't mean that he's an artisan. It just means that he has the natural ability. Uh, when, when I say he, I mean he or she. Uh, may just have a natural talent for that. It doesn't mean that philosophically or spiritually that he is the best, if that makes sense. Uh, and it has to do with longevity. So the artisan philosophy combines uh, sub-philosophies about nature, science, religion, politics, everything in, in your everyday life. Um, and it, it takes what I think are the best virtues of all of those and combines it into a, uh, a mentality of, of you know, being the best, seeking to be the best, and hopefully you will accomplish that <laughs> at some point in your life at what you at what you love doing. And that's really all it's about. It's about how you treat other people as you get to the top of your trade. In other words, you know, if you're if you're bulldogging people or taking advantage of people or cheating or lying or stealing, getting to the top of your trade or your craft, then you're not an artisan. <laughs> You're just, um, you're immoral. And morality and ethics um, have a lot to do with the artisan philosophy. And one of the concepts that I use in my business, um, my artisan construction business, is setting up a relationship uh, with the owner where we are partners in a project. In other words, the traditional model in construction is that, you know, the hierarchy is sort of the the owner is the, the big boss and the contractor is the is the guy doing the work for the owner. Well, with, in my contracts, uh, the owner and the contractor, you know, the design builder, which is me, is equal to the owner. Um, we take great pride in our work. We, we produce the work. We create the work. We create the, the design. 
before the work. And so you should never set up a situation where you are uh, somehow, uh, you know, less of an entity than the owner. The owner is merely paying for the project, which is a, a huge, you know, an important thing, obviously. You can't have a project without an owner and the financing. But this traditional method of, you know, the contractor or in any case, you know, in your field, whatever it is, may be, uh, being the lesser of the party really needs to go away. And it's not about, you know, it's not about ego. It's about uh, the owner understanding the importance of the artisan, you know, the design build contractor or whatever it may be. And once you establish that relationship, then you start to see the project start to take on a new meaning. The project is actually a true partnership. What happens is when, when you set up a project this way and, and the philosophy is actually used, you will see that the project takes on a new life or it, it takes on a life uh, of creativity and honesty and wholeness and it's, it's, the project as a whole is going to be better. Because what happens is, uh, for example, a lot of times I will make suggestions suggestions to an owner. One of the philosophies of an artisan is to always try to use natural materials. Many times I have suggested to the owner, you know, instead of using a vinyl type product, which is very, unfortunately, is very popular uh, because of its maintenance you know, maintenance-free abilities. I will suggest to replace that with you know, wood or some other siding, uh, stone or whatever. Even fiber cement siding is more of a natural product than, than, than plastic, you know, vinyl siding. So that's just one example of, you know, how we try to affect the project and, and affect the quality of it and the design and the outcome. And if you have set up that relationship in the beginning with the owner of respect, and um, you know, you will find that your your results, your project will turn out uh, the way you want it. If either the owner or the contractor is bulldogging the other through the project, then you will find that you you will have less um, communication and less cooperation uh, during the project. So anyway, those are just some practical ways, practical ways, you know, the philosophy works uh, in a project and in your everyday life. And of course, it's um, going back to the respect issue. You're always respecting the owner, uh, the owner respecting the contractor or, or whatever trade it may be. Anyway, anyway, guys, that's enough on that. I didn't mean for this to be a really long video. I just wanted to share a little bit about that and to kind of start getting people understanding the, uh, this philosophy versus the, you know, the internet conspiracy world. Because <laughs> I get that question all the time. Why is your logo on an Illuminati symbol? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny, but at some point, you know, you have to kind of explain uh, the difference. So anyway, hopefully someday I'll finish my book. And <laughs> Uh, nobody will ever read it, maybe, but I'll at least have finished my my task I set out to, to accomplish. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks.